Larry catches the biggest bass. Good morning, guys. What we're doing this morning is I'm going to the first ever lake that I ever put a kayak in. My Old Town Salty PDL 120. I put it in Hillaby Reservoir the first time that I ever went out for a kayak trip. Old Town sent the kayak to me. I was super excited. This lake was 10 minutes away from me. It's a pretty big reservoir. It has an alligator in it. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I got a kayak and I'm on the water. I'm balling. And look at me now four years later, still doing the same, sort of the same thing. We're about to take our kayak out for its maiden void. I guess I probably could have backed the kayak in a little bit more instead of trying to push it off like this. And also I probably should have turned it sideways so it'd be okay. We're gonna Alright, scratch that plan. New plan. I cannot wait until it gets warmer outside and I can wear tacos. There's one. Fish number one in the kayak on the jig. Let's go, baby. Let's go. What is that? Is that a large mouth? Yes! We're gonna take the autopilot there today. We're gonna start off at Hillaby, but then this evening, I'm doing my first ever Thursday night kayak fishing tournament, which I never knew that, that these were a thing, but there's a kayak group around here, Coosa River kayak anglers, that that's all that they do throughout the year. It's just Thursday nighters. So that's gonna be cool, especially like if there's ever, you know, somebody in town, hopefully there'll be some buddies in town later in the summer and we can go and do a Thursday night kayak tournament. It's something different. Normally they're on Saturdays. This, these are from five to dark, two fish stringers, and biggest fish or base and there's a big fish pot but basically if you catch a big one you win that's my thinking of it right now uh this one's on neely henry i'm pretty sure all of them are going to be on neely henry i haven't really looked through the schedule but just based on where the group is out of i think all of them are going to kind of be on neely henry i looked at the map a little bit uh there's really not too much close to the boat ramp that is worth the kayak trip there and back. So I think that's gonna be the cool aspect of it is that you kind of have to figure it out where you're at. My first ever lake, I always used to want to fish this lake growing up. I've caught one four pounder out of it and a little tin John boat. Ooh. 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 Ooh, that's a good one. I never really, sp I haven't spent a whole bunch of time on it, but that four pound is my biggest fish out of it. I have a little mix of everything today. I'm excited for this because I have top water tied on, uh, two spinner rides, a coal shad, spinner bait, chatter bait jig, Texas rig, wacky rig, frog, a chopo. So we got a lot of different stuff tied on this morning, hopefully to have a pretty good day of fishing. So I say that, here's my second thing this morning. So I gotta be careful how I say this because I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I was getting up out of the bed this morning and it was, it was hard, it was like five o'clock, it's 5.36 now, but it was like five o'clock. Uh, alarm goes off at like 4.47, you know, I get myself, I budget a few minutes to just kind of lay there and be like, all right, gotta get going, gotta get. And it was, it was tough. So I just reached my hand out and I let God pull me up this morning. I promise you, he grabbed my hand and he pulled me up. I didn't feel the sensation of him grabbing it, but it was a lot easier to get up and I wasn't like groggy, but Fast forward three minutes, I'm standing in the kitchen washing out a coffee cup to put coffee in. And I'm like, man, like, you know, I would really love to go lay back down. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, if you lay back down, you have an obligation to the Lord first who put you in this position. You're just straight letting him down. I'm not going to say letting him down, but, you know, the, I have, I have what I've asked for. And this just comes part of it. So I need to do that. I promise I'm getting somewhere. Um, two is like your mom and dad that i've watched my mom and dad both work you know 60 hour work weeks for my past or 60 hour work weeks from the time they wake up to you know doing things for me to going to sleep um so i can do that why can i do it? why can i do 70 if they're doing 60 and you know they're getting older they're not old but getting older three i have a son so i want to be the best example for leo i don't want him to be like oh daddy got back in the bed this morning daddy why'd you lay back down this morning uh so i say all that to say one the saying that i've just thought about this i was like people always ask me like what do i need to do to become a fishing content creator i want to be paid or i want to be like this that, and the third like what do i need to do what do i need to do and here's what I always say consistency is the number one thing, but I think the better thing to say is, or another thing, another way to put it, because sometimes it seems like that doesn't register with people for whatever reason, is your dreams don't work unless you do. Like that's the most real statement. And say, oh, I want this, I want this, that, and third. But like, if you don't do anything to work towards it or, you know, maintain the goal, maintain what you have and work towards it, it's not gonna happen for you. When I was in college four or five years ago, if I could see like just, a, clip of like now of me like if i could see like you know what all i've been able to do over the past four years not bragging but like honestly just you know self-reflecting um i'd probably be like holy moly <laughs> like jesus 
<laughs> like, thank you, Lord. Like, I, I've done it. I've made it, which I haven't. But, like, you see what I'm saying? So, it's the same thing. Like, one, be proud of where you're at because I promise you, you know, 95% of you have done a lot, accomplished a lot in the past however many years that you've been working at what you're working at. But you got to do it. You got to work at it. If you don't, it's not going to happen for you. And nobody's going to feel bad for you. I promise you I'm not going to feel bad for you. It's like the only reason why it doesn't work for people is because people quit. I'm going to leave it at that. And comment, what what do you like other than fishing? Like, what's your side project? What do you, do you want to go work out and be a gym influencer? Do you want to be a card influencer? Uh, sports cards, trading cards, what, whatever you want to do. I want to hear. I want to see what y'all got working on. What are you doing to get to that step? All right. So we made it to the lake. It's a lot clearer than what I remember. I remember it being clean water, but this is like gin clear right here at the ramp. Um, there's a dam pretty far that way. Back in this pocket behind me is an alligator. That's probably where I'm going to go to start. I haven't been out here in, shoot, probably three, four years. So I'm super excited. I've only had one. I don't think I've really had like a... I don't think I've ever caught more than three or four fish in a day out here, and I know people have said it can be tough fishing, but uh, now I have eight rods with me. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm gonna just go out and try to, you know, catch a few. Hopefully put together a little something before our tournament this evening. Um, it's just kind of like one of those, you know, people say that passion projects are important. This is 100% a passion project for me. Just, you know, want to get out fish and hopefully have a good day have a good time also look how high the water is on the ramp like i can see concrete for pretty far and that's the parking lot over there so uh yeah let's get into it all right good morning we made it out on the water um i'm gonna go all the way back here in the back so we have quite a few rods tied up i have a chopo wacky rig for side coal shad slobber knocker ned rig spinner bait and a jig i also had a frog in the car the water temp's like 56, 57 degrees, and I don't really think the frog is gonna do anything for us today. Um, so, since we have today, I think last time I, my big one that I caught was actually off of this bank right here. But there's a whole bunch of fish. There's some fish sitting right there, suspended. Or not even suspended on the bottom. The last time I was in here, I caught a four pounder like off of this bank. This bank was lined up with grass what i was gonna say is i'm gonna use this time today to hopefully throw a few new baits that i'm not really super good at but they're just you know staples at this time of year um i'm not gonna say i'm not good at them it's just thing they're things that i don't throw that often so one of those things is going to be a spinner bait once we get kind of further back into the lake a little bit i want to throw the spinner bait just because it's something i really don't pull out i'm super comfortable with the slobber knocker but um, spinnerbait seem like in my little bit of tournament, tournament experience that I've been gathering, seems like a bait that, you know, seems like kind of one of those staple, you know, big fish baits, but you're still catching a limit with it. You know, if you're able to consistently catch fish on a spinnerbait, somebody in the top 10 is always throwing a spinnerbait. I think that's what I'm trying to say. These fish are going to be pretty far behind what I'm doing, you know, in South Alabama or, you know, hour South of Birmingham, Hoover. I don't want to say pretty far behind because I'm sure it's probably a case by case basis, but this is what I'm used to. I'm used to, you know, them not spawning until like April 11th, not spawning March 15th, like how I saw my first beds, you know, a couple weeks ago. And today is April or March 21st for reference. All right, we're not going to spend too much time right here. I just want to get a couple casts, kind of get the pregame jitters out. Let's see what we can get into today. Man, this is cool. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. Another thing I should have brought today was the Alabama rig. I didn't even think about that. It was a big, I've just casted it like two big schools of fish. Or by big, I mean like four or five fish in the school. I don't know if they were bass. They could have been anything, but. I think that's another lure. I'm not gonna say that they 100% would've ate, but it's another good possibility.
but my past two tournament videos i don't even want to start with the ned rig today because i don't want to have to throw it this evening i don't want to put that in my brain that like hey you know you caught fish on that ned rig i'm gonna throw it <laughs> works it works i think that like the last tournament that i fished at inland this lake kind of looks hillary looks a lot like inland I just made a cast at two fish with the front side and they went like this. They separated and went straight down. Oh, one just came up and hit. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I spoke too soon. One was on it when I started moving it again. <laughs> I made a cast at those fish and like as my front side's coming, it got over the top of them and they went like that. They both split and went away. <laughs> Had a few fish come up and look at it. Just nobody's taking it yet. So we're on like a big grass flat right here. Ooh, I don't even think you'd call this a flat. It just gets shallow back here. Um, but it's grassy and I'm seeing some fish from around. So, oh, there's a huge turtle right there. So there's definitely life back here. So I think this is a perfect place to chunk around the coal shed a little bit. See if we can't get a big one to come out and bite. Man, I'm gonna have to come back here in a couple weeks that looks like it's a bed starting to form right there but this would be like the ultimate bed fishing experience like especially with some white bait something easy to see if the water comes up if the water stays clean comes up like three more feet or not even three feet like another foot or so back here i saw a couple bluegill when i first got back here but now i'm just kind of oh there's another bluegill right there now i'm just kind of floating around looking to see what i can see just so grassy back here i guess that grass probably isn't going to go anywhere the warmer it gets so it'll probably kind of multiply but if there's anywhere back here that has a hard bottom which i'm going to probably explore a little bit just to see what i can see all right so i'm gonna throw this chopper around a little bit back here i don't really think anything good will happen but oh there we go here's our first one boys <laughs> I figured if we kept throwing up against, here, let me land this fish before I explain what I was doing. Come here. That's not a bad one. Here we go. Here's our first Hillaby bass of the day. Only took us about three hours to catch the first one, but it's a good one. A good healthy one. I can't imagine this one wouldn't, or I can't imagine this one wouldn't help us this evening. Awesome, large mouth. Um, yeah, so first one on that bluegill fritz side seven. Let's go. I made the switch because one, I haven't seen any shad. Two, um, there's like a layer of grass about six that comes off about six feet off the bank. It's nine feet underneath the grass, so that grass is probably a perfect ambush point for you know bass to sit in how that one was and then for me to throw you know something like this that kind of imitates a bluegill pattern um and then it'll dive down this probably gets down to that seven eight foot range so it's kind of like a perfect setup I'm throwing it right down the ambush point for the bass and they're just going to come out and grab it so luckily that's what i was thinking was going to happen and it actually happened now we just got to find a big one. Oh, there's two on there Okay, so I stand corrected. There's like a four pounder right there and there's his bed. I know y'all can see that pretty good. I just take that crankbait off. One, I have a like nicked guide on that rod and I've known about it for some time, but I can't find it. I've done the Q-tip trick and tried to see if I could get some cotton stuck on the one that's nicked. Um, and nothing seems to be working. There we 
we go. There's one of the slobber knocker. <laughs> there we go. I was like, we keep casting this thing up shallow. Eventually, a good one will hit it. There we go. That's fish number two on it. Our fish number two of the day. Starting to put a little something together slowly. Got to straighten that camera up back there. But hey, you got two fish. Man, I hate I spooked those two big ones that were on bed. Trying to think of other lures that I could throw. I think maybe like the war pig might be a good one. Um, also, just saw my first snake of the year. If anybody cares, I hate snakes. So. Saw my first Alabama copper-headed rattle moccasin. Say it again. Hey, we just yeah. lined up out of water at 710. <laughs> you can get back when you get back. We do we do come and kayak road. <laughs> Lines out of the water at 17. You get back when you get back. If it's 830, it's 830. And if nobody's at the right <laughs> just leave, hey, leave my that's, money that's on the table. <laughs> leave my money on the table on the little rock. Just trust me. Yeah, I'll tell you what how many inches I got. Yeah. You just gotta trust me. All right, guys, kayak tournament number two of the year. There's a really good turnout. This is literally on a Thursday evening. Uh, we had a little bit of entertainment before we launched this morning. That was fun. Um, I have no clue what to expect. I've been through this stretch. One of my dad's friends from work, he took me out fishing a couple times, um, probably four or five years ago. And we rode, I've rode through this stretch a couple times, but I've never fished it. I've never caught any fish out of here. So. Also, I never have had the greatest history with Neely Henry. I might have caught maybe two, maybe three fish out of here. Um, also, my dad's free from work. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We will definitely see. It's definitely going to be interesting. I think I might cut across. I don't think anybody else is going to this side. So, I might go do that so I can have some water to myself. All right. So, what I'm thinking to do as of right now, I'm not sure how deep it is or what it looks like over here. But my mind right now is telling me... Like fishing the riprap and then boat docks. Probably skipping jigs under the docks. I think slow and steady is probably going to win the race today for me. There it is. This will be cool water. All right. Doing the first cast. What is that? Are those all fish? They're like crappie or bass? If I had to guess, those have got to be crappie. Okay, I think I picked a good pocket.
All right, boys, I feel like I'm in a bad position. I'm in four foot of water. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I'm not seeing no fish on the fish finder. I guess that's just a sign. I need to start casting around and figure it out. Because at the rate I'm going, it looks like I might not even catch a fish. I mean, I haven't been nibbled on the Ned rig. I haven't had a bite, you know, potential bite on the spinnerbait, chatterbait, fritz side, anything. There we go. That could be a good one. Oh, that's a catfish. Dude. I ought to take you home. Dude, I thought I thought that was him. I thought that was him. I was like, yeah, I've done it. I don't want to even touch him. I don't want to get catfish slime all on my hands. Hundred and forty six minutes later. I did this shown a lot of character and a lot of different facets. Well, I absolutely sucked that up. We caught a catfish, just one catfish, but I mean, it is what it is. We got more coming up. There's a whole bunch of those. Um, also, I think I found the mother load of crappie. So I really want to do a crappie video. It's just finding the time and then not feeling bad. If I go try to catch crappie, I don't catch anything. Like feeling like I wasted a day. Um, yeah, so not the greatest tournament, but eh, happens. It's part of the learning experience. The only way to do it is to learn, or the only way to learn is to do it. So. It is what it is. I'm gonna watch this five hour Bassmaster Elite series live about Neely Henry and I'm not going to sleep until I finish it. And I honestly might just go back tomorrow just to catch a bass. I might catch one bass and just turn around and leave. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to fish them hard and have a good day. We had a pretty good day today. We started off at Hillaby, explored around a little bit there. Didn't think that they were on beds. Ended up finding the fish on bed. Um, fished around a little bit, was able to catch a couple. Um, then fast forward a few hours, go to Neely Henry, and it's gone. Well, we caught a catfish, so that was cool. But like I said, fish more. Have a good day. See y'all. Peace. Bag, I'm racing the clock, look at them flock, watching them flock. Used to see this in my sleep when I ain't had shit on my thoughts in the car. I really was lost. Now I'm public with the soundscapes.